Greetings, Calc BC students. We are finally at the home stretch of our long topic 9.4. We're going to take a look at example 18. Finally, we're going to talk about derivatives of vector valued functions. Let's take a look at what the criteria says whenever you're going to do a derivative. Well, in our example, we have a situation here where I've given you a lot of different things. I've given you a function f of t, and I've given you a vector u, and I've given you a vector v, just to get a, a bit of variety going on here. And what we've got ha going on here is the fact that we, we can go about taking these derivatives a few different ways. And so let's talk about what we think might be the best way to take the derivative for part a which is a function f of t times a vector u of t. So if we back up here just a little bit to a table that is included in the notes for the students that I have that may be watching this video, you go about taking your derivatives in a way that probably will be very reminiscent of the way that you took your limits. It says if u and v are differentiable vector value functions of t, um, and f is some differentiable real valued function of t, so you've got u and v are vectors, but f is just a function. k is just a scalar. Well, here are the properties that we're going to be using. Scalar multiplication, exactly as you would, as you would have uh, anticipated. <laughs> you would just simply take the k out in front, take the derivative of the vector value function, which we're still going to show you how to do, and boom, you've got your answer. Addition, subtraction, just exactly, again, what you would probably have uh, anticipated. You just take the two derivatives of your vector value functions and then throw your plus or minus in. Now, if you're going to do the derivative of a multiplication problem by a function, you certainly uh, can use the product rule here. Notice that f of t is the function, u is the vector, and you would just simply take the product rule the way that you always have taken. And if you are, in, that, in fact, multiplying a pair of vectors, uh, taking their derivative, then the product rule would look a little something like this. But the question is, do you want to do some simplification first, or do you want to use the product rule first? And that's what we have to really decide here. In our example 18 part A, we can take that function f of t, and we could physically multiply it through the u of t if we want. So this could be a potential uh, way to do the problem. f of t, whoops, let's multiply this out. Let's do this the right way. f of t times vector u of t. So if this is the way that we wanted to start this, not a derivative yet, but just to simplify this, this t squared plus t is going to multiply through this vector u that I'm going to underline here. So t squared plus t times 1 over t would be the quantity t plus 1. Hopefully you all see that. And then the i would still be part of that. And then we have our subtraction. And then the quantity t squared plus t multiplied by 1 is, of course, t squared plus t, and that would be multiplied by j. Now you could go ahead and take the derivative. And I guess I need to write out the notation here to indicate that that is indeed what my intent here is. So how do we take the derivative of a vector value function? Well, as I ind indicated earlier, you would simply take the derivative of the i part with respect to t. That would give us 1 and then times i. And yes, I did not have to write the 1 there. And then you subtract. And then the same thing here. The derivative of t squared plus t is 2t plus 1. Multiply that by j. And boom, there you have it. Now, I want to make it very clear, if you want to just watch this, there was another approach to this. What if you wanted to go ahead and do the product rule here? Well, let's see what that would reveal. The derivative of f of t would be 2t plus 1. No arguments there, right? But you would be obligated to multiply that by the vector u, which is 1 over t times vector i minus vector j. And then you would add to that the t, or I'm sorry, the f of t, remember the product rule, it's f prime times the u plus f, and now the derivative of the vector u. Now, 
the derivative of 1 over t is negative 1 over t squared, right? You're taking the derivative of t to the negative 1. And then the derivative of negative 1j is actually going to be pretty easy. It's 0, 0j, zero so you don't even have to write it. But now, as you can see, you're still going to have to multiply through by these function values that you have in front. So if 2t plus 1 multiplies by 1 over t, we would get 2 plus 1 over t, and all of that multiplied by vector i. And then we subtract 2t plus 1 times 1 would be 2t plus 1. All that times vector j. And then over here, let's see, what would we have here? I guess we could say plus, and then 2 squared plus t times negative 1 over t squared would give us negative 1. That's when the t squared is multiplied. And then a minus 1 over t when the t is multiplied through. And that, of course, is going to be multiplied by vector i. But if we combine like terms for our vector i pieces, basically we're saying that this guy and this guy are common to one another, so they can be combined. And the 2 plus the negative 1 is 1. And then, lo and behold, the 1 over t's cancel each other out completely, don't they? And so 1 is all that's left to be multiplied by j. And then we drop down the, or that's to be multiplied by i, I should say. And then we just drop down the negative t plus 2t plus 1 times j. And notice our answers are the same. Um, you could argue and say, well, this purple procedure took three steps and the blue only took two steps. I'm not going to disagree with that. I think there's a lot of truth to that. And so for that reason, maybe we think about trying to do the multiplication first. So I'm not going to use both procedures to do part B. Let's go ahead and do the multiplication first and see how that goes. Vector u times vector v. Note, that is a dot product. So you're going to take the component of u, 1 over t, that's in front of i, and multiply it by the component of i in the vector v. 1 over t times t squared is t. Don't forget that you would then add that to the product of the components of the j vectors, which in this case is negative 1 times negative natural log of t, which is plus natural log of t. Now here's the thing that you want to really remember. This is indeed what u dot v is. I won't put the formal of t's there. So the derivative of this is no longer going to be a vector value function. It's just simply going to be a function of t, and it would look something like that. Now, I would strongly encourage you to try this problem by using the product rule. It doesn't take that much more effort and see if indeed it will yield the same answer, and it should. This concludes our long 9.4 lesson. I got great news for you when we come into 9.5, it's a much shorter lesson, only uh, I believe three videos, three examples, when we go into the idea of how to integrate vector value functions. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.